Okay, guys, uh, today we're going to be checking out the, uh, the next installment of the R Finder video series. I started a couple weeks ago, and I did a fresh load of a brand new device. Today we're going to be taking the cloud memories from my first device and backing them up to the cloud, which I've actually already done. I keep those backed up anyway. And then we're going to download and install my cloud memories into my second device, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that coming up. Hey guys, Ham Radio 2.0. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB, and on this channel we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. So if that's something that interests you, consider subscribing below. Hit the like button and the bell notification icon so you can keep up with all the videos that we post on this channel. Okay, so today we're going to do the next logical step in the R Finder, the brand new Get a Device, Set It Up series. That's not an official name, but that's what I just kind of called it in, in my head. If you look right here, I'll place a card on YouTube for you to click on. You can see unboxing a brand new R Finder B1, putting the SIM card in it, booting it up the first time, associating it with your Google account, and making sure that your R Finder repeater directory app is up to date. So let me switch over to this view right here. And we're going to see the two devices that I've got. This is my original one here. All right, so this is my, on the left, this is my old device, and this is my new device. And we are going to be using the old device upcoming for some videos to do different kinds of how-to videos. I'm going to, it's going to be, uh, Bob said to send it back to him, and I said, well, why don't I keep it? And every time you need me to wipe the device, I can use this device and then use this one as my daily carry. And he said, yeah, okay, that's great. That's a great idea. <laughs> so, because I don't need two phones. Carrying one of these bulky phones around is plenty. But you can uh, you can see I've got a properly branded R Finder on this one, and it just says waterproof on this one. That's a good uh, good indicator. Again, as I said in the last video, this one on the left here was a... It was a very early run of the production model series. It was not a prototype. He had a couple of prototypes prior to this one, but this was a very very early run of the of the production model that is now on the market. All right, so we're going to go here, and I'm going to click on the R Finder app. It is the one that says ham on it right there. Something I learned, or actually, I didn't really learn it, but I relearned it, and I failed to mention it on the last video. If you're going into the Play Store and looking for that R Finder app, you're not going to find it. It is just listed as the repeater directory, which is like right there, worldwide repeater directory. I'm hoping that's not too bright in the camera. There, that's a little bit better. So worldwide repeater directory right there, and that's how it's listed in the Google Play Store. So you can't really um, you can't really find the proper icon for what this looks like here. It's just, I mean, it's, it is the proper icon. It's just different. Okay, so just be aware. It's just called the R Finder Worldwide Repeater Directory. It will install on any device, any Android or iOS device, but if it sees an actual R Finder um, HT tr transceiver device, it gives you a lot more options in it. So that's, this is what the, and you'll see that down there at, at the bottom, it'll say verified R Finder device. So um, when you launch the app, if you actually are on a, a B1 or an M1 or a K1 or even one of the older H1s, it'll do that. Uh, it'll do that on the tablet as well. So now we're going to go into cloud memories. We're going to click on the, the option there. And the, the second one down is, is just called memories. These are my memories right here. I created these zones. I have, uh, let's see, I have three different zones. This local zone one is what was there by default. I created a zone for hotspot, simplex, and uh, KC5HWB, which is of course my call sign and that's my repeater that i have my backyard repeater here so the simplex one which is what we're on right now this is simplex zero one two three and four which are all dmr simplex channels on uhf and there's a 146.52 on fm analog so th th these are just cloud memories i created for myself because they're channels and frequencies that i use on a regular basis here's the ones i have for my hotspot texas statewide on my hb link server TGIF group and the R Finder talk group, which is 31, 31770 on Brandmeister. 
So, and I've already got this done, but I'm going to walk through the steps for you guys. Uh, cloud save memories and cloud restore memories. So it should be pretty obvious at this point in time. I'm going to save the memories. Memories saved to the cloud. And this part I have not done yet. Here's my fingerprint reader. Okay, so there's my fingerprint reader. There you go. See how quick that was? Let me do that again, just for the heck of it. Because the fingerprint reader uh, option was not working on the first device. I can just... I scanned my fingerprint the other day, and shortly after I made that last video, and now it works like a charm. Right there. W6REP Radio Adventures has posted a new video. I actually just watched that. It was pretty good. So now we're going to go back into the same icon right there. That's ham. Just says ham. And if we go to memories, second one down, you'll see nothing's loaded. Now, I've, I've purposefully waited to load these memories until I could do it in front of the camera. So now I'm going to load cloud restore memories just like that. And it says, are you sure you want to restore memories from the cloud? Any unsaved local changes will be lost, which I haven't put anything in here because you can see local zone one is the only zone and it's empty. So I don't, I'm not going to really lose anything. So click OK. Memories restored from cloud. I'm in local zone one still, which I don't care about. Again, that's the default zone. There's my three zones, hotspot, simplex, and KC5 HWB. Those are all my simplex frequencies. No. Nope. Uh, hit the wrong thing there. Hit the drop down. Go to my repeater. There's all my repeater talk groups. And there we go. So it's as simple as that. So you don't ever have to worry about... Some people have come along and, and asked about what to do about upgrades. Because, you know, just like any other smartphone ever made, there's going to come a point in time where this phone is outdated. Okay? The Samsung Galaxy S3, S4, S5, the iPhone... I don't know what they're on now. Eight, is it? Whatever. If you have an older iPhone, a three or four, um, you're not using those anymore because you're using the newer stuff, the newer hardware that's upgradable to the latest OS for each platform. You know, m your, your Samsung Galaxy or HTC phones or old Motorola phones or, or even Google Pixels and Google Notes from way back when, they'll only, the hardware will only support up to a certain level of OS. So at some point in time, you're going to run out of upgrades. It's going to say this device is no longer able to be upgraded to the latest and greatest version of Android OS comes out or the latest and greatest version of iOS that comes out. Um, and that's true on any platform. I mean, that's true on your desktop and laptop computer. Newer versions of Windows or Mac OS come out. They're not going to be supported on the older hardware. So just like any other device in the world, this one is going to reach a date at some point in the future where it won't take a newer OS update, and we're going to have a new version of the R Finder released. I mean, this is the fourth version that I've had. This is the first fourth version that Bob has released and the fourth version that I have owned myself. I had the very original H1, which was a monster. I mean, it was like almost like a concealed weapon. That thing was huge. And then I got the M1, which I carried for a year and a half. Really liked it. I had the K1 for a very short period of time. I didn't like it because the screen resolution on the K1 and the M1 were exactly the same, but the K1 was two-thirds the size of the M1 screen. So in other words, you had a smaller screen with the same resolution, so all the icons were the same between the two devices, but you had less real estate on the K1. And I just, I didn't like the screen size. That's why I didn't keep that device. But the M1 I carried for a year and a half and I only switched away from it because I got a new job. I got a company paid phone with Verizon. And at the time, the M1 would not work on Verizon. I think the M1 still doesn't work on Verizon. I could be wrong about that. The, the B1 will work on all carriers. So this device I have had on Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T, and it's worked fine on all of them. But again, cloud memories are a great thing. That's what we're talking about today. You can program everything in there for your local repeaters. You can, you can scan. You can program it manually. You can scan and pick one and save it to a cloud memory. You can create a zone, name it home QTH, name it the city that you live in, save a cloud memory in there. And if you ever, heaven forbid, lose your device or it gets run over by a car, falls out the window of an airplane that you're flying you know, from one state to the other, or you just want to upgrade devices later on when a new model comes out in a couple of years. You won't lose anything. Back up everything to the cloud. Download it from, um, from the cloud. Back again. It restores just as quickly as you saw. 
It's a great concept. So, 73 guys, thank you for watching. I wish they had cloud back up for like the Anytone radios. That would be fun. Being able to back up and restore a code plug. Yeah, that's what makes the R Finder special. Can't do that on any other device. 73, put your comments below. Let me know if you've used this feature and what other videos, what other how to videos you might want to see about the R Finder device specifically. Catch you guys next time.